chemical formula by Dr. Abraham Chedozi Nicholas. In our previous class, we tried to look at what elements, compounds, and mixtures are. We looked at the different elements that we have, focusing majorly on the first 20 elements. Then we talked about what a valency is. We also tried to show you how valences or different elements are derived. So in our presentation today, we'll be talking about chemical formulas. We'll look at how those valences which we derive is used in forming the chemical formulas for different compounds or different substances that we have in nature. Now, chemical formulas are the representation of a molecule of a substance or compound with a set of symbols and numerals. Chemical formulas are derived from the exchange of the valences of the elements that form that compound. Now, if you recall in the last class, we said valences are the combining power of an element. So, this part is telling us that valences between two different elements are exchanged in order to form a compound. Now, let's look at the example we have before us. It says hydrogen reacts with oxygen to form water. Hydrogen, we know the symbol is H. Oxygen, we know the symbol is O. And then water is H2O. So how did we come about the H2O that we say is the formula for water? Now, hydrogen has a valency of 1. Oxygen has a valency of 2, if you recall from the last class. Now, there will be an exchange or interchange of the two valencies of the two elements. Hydrogen gives its valency to oxygen. Oxygen takes the valency of hydrogen. So by the time there's an interchange of that valency, what we then have is H2O. The 2 is written as a subscript. The way you have in mathematics basis, when you want to say log 10 base 10. So you call it a math basis, but in chemistry, we call them subscript. So H subscript 2 and then an O. We don't have anything like O1. O1 is the same thing as saying 1X and X. They are both the same thing. So we don't put the 1 there. You just know that that is a single oxygen atom that is there. So the formula for water is H2O. Now we have another example that says magnesium reacts with chlorine to form magnesium chloride. If you recall, in the last class, we said the valency of magnesium is 2, and for chlorine, its valency is 1. By the time they exchange their valencies, it becomes MgCl2, the 2 being the subscript. Now, looking at the ionic equation, from there, we can also derive the formulas of different chemical compounds if we are given the ionic equation or the ionic form of the different elements. Magnesium is carrying a 2 plus positive charge at the top and then chlorine is carrying a negative charge at the top. The negative sign means minus 1. We can choose to either put the 1 there or we can choose to just leave it like that. Now by the time they exchange the ionic charge, it gives you still MgCl2 as magnesium chloride. Remember, in the last class, we also said that compounds or molecules do not carry any charge when they are formed. If they were positive or if they were negative, the individual elements before they react, by the time they've reacted to form the compound, compounds have no charges. So that is why it is written as MgCl2. You didn't see us writing MgCl2 with a plus sign at the top or MgCl2 with a minus sign at the top. Now moving on to the next example, it says aluminum reacts with oxygen to form aluminum oxide. Aluminum has a valency of 3, oxygen has a valency of 2. By the time there's an interchange of the two valencies, it then forms Al2O3, meaning aluminum oxide. So there's been an exchange of the valences between aluminum and oxygen to form aluminum oxide. And then one molecule of Al2O3 means that there's a presence of two aluminum atoms and three oxygen atoms in aluminum oxide. 
Now, for example, if we were to have two AL subscript two O subscript three as a molecule that was formed, it means that two molecules of AL two O three will contain four aluminium atoms and six oxygen atoms. What he's trying to tell us is that assuming there was a power of two, or assuming there was a two a coefficient of two in front of Al two O three, that two is both for the aluminium and the oxygen. It multiplies through the compound. The two is not just for the aluminium; it is both for the aluminium and the oxygen. So if I have three Al two O three, it means that in three molecules of Al two O three, we would have six aluminium atoms and nine oxygen atoms. It's just like where you say three brackets x plus two y to give you three x plus six y. So that's the same principle that we apply here. Chemical equations. They represent chemical changes or chemical reactions by means of symbols and formulas. Now, the example we have in front of us says magnesium reacts with oxygen to form magnesium oxide. Magnesium symbol is Mg, oxygen is O, represented as O2, and then the product that is formed is MgO. Why? Magnesium has a valency of 2, if you recall, and then oxygen has a valency of 2. Now, in cases whereby the two elements reacting have the same valency, you simply strike out the two valencies and combine the two symbols of the elements together to get your product. So Mg reacting with oxygen, the two cancels each other, and then you have MgO. The same thing can also be said for your cooking salt, sodium chloride. Sodium has a valency of 1, chlorine has a valency of 1. Because both of them have a valency of 1, you simply strike out the 1 and combine the two elements together to have NaCl as the formula for your salt, sodium chloride. Now, we call the left-hand side, LHS means the left-hand side, RHS means the right-hand side. Now, the left-hand side of the equation are where we have the reactants, and then the right-hand side is where we have the products or where we have products, depending on the equation you're given. So, for this particular one, we have two reactants with one product. You must always have two reactants. It could be two elements reacting to form a product, or it could be an element reacting with a compound, or it can be two compounds reacting to form different products, as the case may be. Now, we'll move to the major thing, which is the key focus for today, which is balancing chemical equations. This is the really interesting part. If you're able to master this at this level, even if you get to um, SS1, SS2, SS3, you wouldn't find balancing chemical equations difficult you'll be able to navigate through it very easily now it says equations in the science of chemistry are balanced by finding where there are inadequate or surplus atoms on either side of the equation and introducing coefficients in the previous slide i think i talked about i mentioned coefficient but i didn't explain what a coefficient is now coefficients are whole numbers that are attached in front of either an element or in front of a compound in order to balance that particular chemical equation. The way you say, um, maybe you have 3x, 4y. Coefficient of x is 3. Coefficient of y is 4. So coefficients are whole numbers that are, in touch, that are attached in front of variables. That's what you say in math. So the same thing happens here, but this time around, we're not attaching it in front of variables. We're attaching it in front of elements attaching it in front of compounds in order to balance our chemical equations. Now, the example in front of us says calcium chloride reacts with aluminium oxide to form calcium oxide and aluminium chloride, meaning the reactants are calcium chloride and aluminium oxide, while the products that will be formed are calcium oxide and aluminium chloride. Now, let's start with calcium chloride. Calcium, you recall, the valency is 2 chloride or chlorine valency is one by the time there's an exchange of the two valencies we are left with CaCl2 as a formula for calcium chloride 
aluminium oxide, aluminium valency is 3, oxygen valency is 2. By the time there's an exchange of the two valencies, it forms Al2O3, which is the formula for aluminium oxide. Then calcium oxide, calcium valency is 2, oxygen valency 2. Since the two valencies are the same, they strike out each other to form CaO, which we call calcium oxide. And then for aluminium chloride, aluminium valency 3, chlorine valency 1. By the time there's an exchange of the valencies, it gives us AlCl3 as aluminium chloride now looking at the equation before us if you pay careful attention you would notice that we have some imbalances in some elements in different places now calcium is one on both ends of the equation both on the reactant and the product cl2 means two chlorine atoms on the reactant side but on the product side we have cl3 meaning there's excess chlorine that was formed in the product side you look at aluminium we have al2 meaning two atoms of aluminium on the reactant side while on the product we just have al one aluminium atom and then for oxygen we have o3 meaning three atoms of oxygen while on the product side we just have a single oxygen atom o so meaning we have imbalances in chlorine in aluminium and in oxygen so in the course of this presentation, we'll look at how we'll try to balance this equation so that at the end of the day, the four elements that we have there, calcium, chlorine, aluminium, and oxygen, will be equal on both sides of our arrow. Now, we have the equation before us. Now, the first step is we'll look at the first element which we have there, which is calcium. Calcium on both sides is balanced we just have single calcium atoms so since calcium is balanced we move to the next element which is chlorine now chlorine on the reactant side is two cl2 meaning two atoms of chlorine while on the product side we have cl3 meaning three atoms of chlorine now balancing of chemical equations usually involves a trial and error method if you try a particular number to balance a an equation or to balance an element or to balance a compound and it doesn't work you move to the next element maybe i want to balance start with two i put two into the equation it doesn't work i move to the next number which is three i try three it doesn't work i move to four and so on and so on. so you keep doing that until eventually you would find a number that would balance both sides and then we also need to apply your mathematical knowledge into this now, looking at the reactant side, remember we said we put coefficients in front of either the elements or the compound in order to balance it. Now, looking at the reactant side of chlorine, of um, um, the equation, calcium chloride, focusing on the chlorine, we have two on the left-hand side, which is reactant, and on the product side, we have three. Now, if I was to put three as a coefficient for calcium chloride, my chlorine there becomes 3 times 2. Remember, we said whatever we put in front multiplies through the two elements that are bearing that particular coefficient. So if I was to put 3 in front of CaCl2, the 3 is both for the calcium and for the chlorine. So if we were to put 3 for CaCl2, chlorine becomes 3 times 2, 6 chlorine. So but on the product side, I just have 3 down there as the subscript. So if I was to put a coefficient of 2 in front of aluminium chloride, AlCl3, it becomes 2 multiplied by the 3 that was there previously, and that will give me 6 chlorine. So in that way, my equation will then be balanced. So the equation that we have below there says 3CaCl2 reacting with Al2O3 to forward arrow CaO plus 2AlCl3 balances the chlorine but in balancing that chlorine you would notice that something has changed that wasn't there before calcium has been affected before now calcium on both sides were single calcium atoms one calcium atom but now on the reactant side we're having three calcium atoms and then on the product side we are still left with a single calcium atom so in the next slide we're going to see how we try to balance that equation now this is the rate or this is the state at which our equation is presently now since we have three calcium on the reactant it means we also need three calcium atoms 
on the product side. So we'll introduce a coefficient of 3 in front of calcium oxide, CaO. By doing that, you would notice that our calcium would then be equal. We'll have 3 calcium on the reactant, 3 calcium on the product side. Doing that also, you would notice that automatically our equation has been balanced. Because if we have the final equation there as 3CaCl2 reacting with Al2O3 to form 3CaO plus 2AlCl3. Now let's look at the individual elements. We have 3 calcium on the reactant side. On the product side, we have 3 calcium atoms. Our calcium is balanced. We move to the next element, which is chlorine. Chlorine is 3 multiplied by 2. We have 6 chlorine atoms on the reactant side. On the product side, we have AlCl3. We have 2 AlCl3. The 2 multiplied by 3, we have 6 chlorine atoms. Chlorine is balanced. We have on the reactant side Al2, meaning 2 aluminium atoms. On the product side, we have 2 Al, meaning 2 aluminium atoms. Aluminium is balanced. On the reactant side, we have O3, meaning 3 oxygen atoms. On the product side, we also have 3 O, meaning 3 oxygen atoms. So finally, we've finally been able to balance the chemical equation. There are some equations that can be very easy for you to balance. There are some that might be tricky, but all it requires is patience. If you try a particular number, it doesn't work, you move to the next one. But eventually, you'll be able to balance that equation. Thank you for listening and see you in the next class.